there, thanks for joining me today. My name's Jo and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the UK. Um, today I'm going to show you a really simple card. It's using one of my favourite techniques. Um, so I'm going to show you how it's done, but first of all I'm going to show you what we're using. This is a brand new stamp set that is coming um, next week on the 4th and um, it's called Flowers of Friendship and it's got these really beautiful clear images. Now, um, we do do some really lovely images that have got very much a lot of detail, detail on them um, and they're great in their own way, but sometimes it is nice to have these really nice open, what I call open flowers, um, because we can do all sorts of different techniques with them. So as I say, it's a really simple card today. So if I show you the card here, so there we go. So we're doing a little bit of a heat embossing and then we are painting onto what is sort of a mid-tone um, card. We're going to use a different colour today just to get the different effects. Um, so you can see sort of um, how they can look so different. Excuse my inky fingers. You see I've been creating today. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do first of all is to um, give you some measurements and then we'll get cracking. So... I've decided to use um, our new card. Um, this is called Soft Succulent. So this is a really beautiful soft green. Um, it's, it's just gorgeous and it goes so well with so many of our existing colours and the new colours as well. So this is a standard c -Sex card which is 21 centimetres across by 14.85 high and it's scored at 10 and a half just to give us our card base. And then I've got a second piece. So this is the piece that we're actually going to be painting on. So this one measures um, nine and a half by 13.85. So it's a centimetre smaller than the front of our card. Um, if you're working in inches, you can just work out sort of a, a layer down. We just want a little border um, and we're going to sponge these edges once we get cracking. So first thing we need to do is we're going to emboss our flower onto here. So I'm just going to take an embossing buddy just to get rid of any um, sort of excess oils or anything that might be on my card. It's amazing, even if you've just got the card out of your um, pack, you handle it and before you know it, you, you've actually um, put some oils onto the card. So it's worth doing if you've got one. Um, if you haven't, you can put some cornflour or something into a pair of old stockings or something that can work too. Okay, so I'm using um, Versamark ink. So this is just the watermark stamp pad onto the big flower stamp. And I'm just stamping it to one side. Okay, now I know you can't see that at the moment, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to emboss it in gold um, embossing powder. And just give it a quick tap just to remove any excess that might have got caught on something. Okay, so I'm just going to heat that now. Okay, so that's now all heat set. I'm just going to let that cool just for a moment, just while I grab the other pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using um, two of our new colours. So soft succulent is obviously one of them um, and we're going to be using evening evergreen and we're also going to be using polished pink. So these are uh, two really beautiful colours and I think they're going to complement this really nice. Although we're going green on green I think you'll see that we'll get a really nice contrast. So the other thing that I'm going to be using is our Whisper White ink. Now this comes with the uninked um, Whisper White um, ink pad so this is your what you use to actually ink your pad up with but it's got so many good other uses um, it's a bit thicker than normal ink it's more gloopy um, and it's got chalk in it so it's quite um, it's it's quite chalky the way it sort of looks when it when you use it you'll see as we go ahead so the other thing I've got is just um, a pot of water and a normal paintbrush. So this is just a normal um, normal paintbrush. This is a size four, um, but you use whatever you're comfortable with. And the first thing I want to do is just to mix up some of this 
ink just to loosen it slightly as I say it is quite thick it is quite gloopy so you just want to make that just um, a little bit lighter in um, sort of its form and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint into each of my flowers to start with and then we'll do the leaves afterwards now you'll see when this goes on it is quite vibrant white but you'll be surprised how it will tone down once it's um, once it's dried so you want it to be reasonably white because we want a nice base to work with now just just remember not to water it down too much because you you still need um, it not to be too opaque so don't water it down too much and also you don't want to put too much water onto your card now you can use this technique on um, dark cardstock too so you can use it on black something like knight of navy you do get a different effect i think i've done a video on a darker background it's a lot lighter um, and it doesn't pop quite so much as as these do um, but you'll you'll get the feel for it and the best things to do is to have a little play i quite like using these mid-tone colors I think they're um, a, a nice sort of contrast. You get an element of of the colour popping through, but it's not um, overly overpowering. Crumb cake is another one. Um, I did a one with crumb cake a while back, um, which was really nice as well. So you can just have a play with the different colours. Now can you see where that's drying so that's going quite opaque in places now that's what i want to achieve i do want this to dry before i move on so whilst that's drying i'm going to just move on to my leaves as well and then hopefully the flowers should be ready to paint once once we're done now i can feel that that is now getting a little bit thick again so I'm just going to add a little bit more water and that will enable me just to move it around a little bit better. You don't want to be dragging it so you need to um, have it <clears throat> of a consistency where you can sort of move it around quite easily. Now if you notice in the centre I'm painting directly over that embossed section in the middle because um, it will repel water so once we add um, the colour which will have a little bit more water in it um, it will repel any ink off there so don't don't be too precise you can just go over the top okay so that is still a little bit damp and so I'm just going to help it on its way I'm literally going to put a quick blast with the heat gun just to give it um, a chance to dry Okay, so it is still a little bit damp, but it's not too bad, so I will continue. Um, when you do this yourself, you can obviously leave it a little while just to, to dry off a little bit better. But it, it's absolutely fine. It's um, It will be fine the way it is. So the first thing I want to do is to do my flowers. So I'm just going to add some of this ink to the um, lid of my pad here. And what I want to do is to pick up some of that ink. Now I want some of it quite watered down so it's very pale and then we can go in with a darker colour afterwards. It's better to build it up than it is to go in um, full colour. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do first of all is start laying some of this lovely pink onto my petal. Now you will find that you'll pick up some of that chalkiness because that will come through. Um, we just want to build up that colour so I've got a nice sort of colour in don't water it too much because the chalkness in the actual ink will sort of move it around a little bit I picked up a little bit more colour this time and again I'm just moving it around and then a little bit more colour again 
So you'll start building it up, but you will find that this will dry a lot lighter than what you put it on. So you might have to come back and do some more layers, but the best thing to do is to get the color on there and then you can come back to it. Now, I carried my pink up to the top and now what I want to do is just to add a little bit more of the white. So we get that contrast and then I'm just going to blend those edges together. Okay, so I'm not going to play with that anymore because I think that needs to dry and then we can come back and we can have a look at it and we can see how the colour is building up. So I'm going to move on to the next petal. And I'm going to just try not to take quite so much colour up to the top this time. So although it's taken to the top, it's a lot, lot lighter than the previous. But as I say, we can add some more white if we need to. Okay, you see I'm using the back of my hand just to wipe any excess off. Um, you can use tissue, of course. It's just, uh, I find it useful just to take the moisture away. Okay, if you find it's moving around a little bit too much and it becomes a little bit patchy, the best thing to do is just to let it dry. Um, this is partly because mine wasn't completely dry, so do allow that extra time just for, for drying. And I'm just stroking the colour up from that bottom section. Okay, again, I'm going to let it dry because you can see how it changes. So it's better for me to come back and then have another look at it in a moment. So I'm going to continue for the rest of the flower. I can see this isn't quite dry. So this is why it's sort of moving around more than it should have done. So you definitely want to allow it a little bit longer to dry. we'll get there and I'm going to bring some more colour into that centre one again and you can see you can still move it around it's not like a, if you've laid colour onto our basic white card for, stock for example you'd never be able to move that around but because we've got this chalkiness underneath um, it enables you to sort of manipulate the colour a little bit more so, so don't be frightened to go back and have another little play. I'm going to allow that to dry again. I can see this is still wet here so um, it, you know it, it takes a, f a little while to dry but I can work with it. So I can see now that that's sort of starting to come together. This middle flower um, is quite a lot of pink. So I just want to just water that down just very slightly. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of white to these top sections. Hopefully this will just tone it down just that little bit. So I just put some white on. 
I'm just going to clean my brush and dry it a little bit and then just try and pull that colour or the whiteness down again. And then we can just mix the two together. And then right in the centre, I just want to add a little bit more of the darker pink. Where the light is on this I can't can't see it when it's flat so that's why I'm just lifting it up but obviously you'll be working on yours without the lights directly over you now I quite quite like that I quite like the way these ones have turned out um, this one here I'm just going to add a little bit more pink to just on that bottom section there we go so I think I'm quite happy with that I don't really want to play with that anymore um, so I'm going to move that color out of the way wipe right the back of my hand a little bit okay and then we're going to use our evening evergreen now this is quite dark um, in fact it's very dark so you do need to be a little bit careful of it um, but provided you take it slowly you'll, you'll be absolutely fine so I'm going to water down some to start with and I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before I watered that down maybe a little bit too much because we're going green on green obviously we do need to pull in quite a bit of that colour to get the contrast I just need a little bit more of the dark green. That's better. So all I did there was I just squished my ink pad together just to transfer some of the colour onto the lid. Um, it, it won't go to waste. It will all be used. So don't, you know, don't panic that you're going to suddenly run out of ink. And of course we do sell the reinkers in any event. Okay, so I think I'm quite happy with that. Um, as I say, it's meant to be a sort of a subtle sort of effect on there. So you don't want too much sort of going on. So I think the detail on that is just sufficient just to give us that really nice, beautiful effect. Okay, so the next thing I want to do... I'm keeping those two, my water and my white ink to one side because we're going to be using those again in a moment. The next thing I want to do is to sponge around my edges. Now you can use um, a darker colour if you want to. I like to use tone on tone because it just gives you that sort of, um, it stands out but it doesn't really stand out in your face. So that's why I kind of tend to use um, tone on tone. I'm just using um, a blending brush and I'm going to work directly onto my work surface here. Um, I'm going to do this section last because that's um, still a bit wet there so hopefully my desk won't wiggle too much. And can you see just that tone on tone and you can layer it up so you can make this as, as dark or as light as you want to. But again, the lighter you start, then you can build up the layers. It is such a pretty technique because it, it can be really subtle um, or you can go really full on vibrant. So it, it's quite a nice sort of technique to, to have a play with. Thank you. 
Now, when I created this card, because it was quite sort of subtle, I wanted a really subtle greeting on it. Um, and I love the little word love um, that I've used here. And this is taken from the uh, New Quiet Meadow um, suite. So it was quite, it was a sort of mix up of the two really, but I really quite liked it and I thought it would make a nice, nice contrast. Just be a little bit careful around here so I'm still wet. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm, I'm going to stick with that. I don't want it too, too much. So the next thing I want to do is to bring in, um, my green ink back and I'm also going to use the white ink now when I did the original um, I only used white on the background but we're going to have a little play with this one so what I want to do is to mix up some of this dark green till it's quite um, fluid but it's quite dark okay and then I'm just going to tap very lightly onto the background of the card I'm avoiding the flowers a little bit but I'm not too worried if it does go over them um, because that's you know the overall effect okay so that's that done I'm going to clean my brush and then I'm going to bring it in the white and I'm going to do exactly the same with the white didn't clean that very well did I over here that's it I'm going to do exactly the same with the white. So I've, I've watered this quite strongly this time. And now what I'm going to do is to tap white. You will get some water taps as well. That's absolutely fine. That doesn't matter. That will all add to the finish. And I'm certainly not worrying if the white spots go for my flowers because they actually make it look really nice. Okay, so I will clear all that up later. So normally, again, I would allow this to dry naturally, but because of, of obviously showing you what I'm doing, I'm going to now quickly um, put a heat gun onto this just to um, dry it off. Okay, so I, I think that's all dry. I will obviously be very careful the way I handle it, just in case that um, there is still a little bit of damp on there. So if I bring this in, you can see this is going to sit on this card. So you can see the different contrast now, which I think um, is, is really pretty. Um, and this will be a little bit buckled to start with, but it, it will flatten once we get it in place. So the next thing I want to do is to add my little tag. Now I have pre-made this because um, it obviously made sense just for me to, to get that done. And before I use linen thread on this, but this time I think I'm going to use some of our new gold um, Simply Elegant trim. And all I want to do is just to tie a, a bow now when I did the original I actually went through my card so I made some holes in the base of my card and then um, I threaded it through um, but you don't need to do that and just to make life a bit easier we're just going to tie a quick bow she says confidently Now this is quite um, thick and it's quite um, shiny and a bit, a little bit temperamental. So just bear that in mind. But it's beautiful, so it's worth the effort. And you might just need to tighten it a few times and adjust it. going to trim the ends off of that and I'm just going to position it down a little bit just so that my bow sits nicely there we go and what I did was I added a little bit of um, dimensional just to the top section so I'm just going to cut a little bit off the edge here I'm just going to add it to that top So 
So that is now stuck on. And then I put this on here using 3D foam. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to use 3D foam or whether you want to um, stick it flat. Um, I might stick this one flat as it's slightly different to the other. And that's when you get that lovely contrast between the two pieces of card. Now I can see there's a couple of bits weren't quite dry here because I have got a couple of little smudges. Obviously that won't happen to you and actually I'm not too worried. It's, it sort of adds to the sort of overall effect of it and what will happen once it's all sort of um, photographed and everything you, you won't notice. Okay, so that's that done. And the final thing I did was added some little gems. Now these are our in color jewels. These are absolutely beautiful. So I used some of the pink on here. Um, and then I used also some of these new ones, which um, if I can put my hands on them, there we go. These are the silver and clear epoxy essentials. So I used just some clear ones and it just adds that little um, sort of sweet colour to it. So I'm going to use some of the um, evergreen because I think it will be a really nice contrast on here. You can see I've been using these quite a bit. So if you do get any little smudges you can sort of hide some of them. And then as I say I've got these silver and clear and these are quite nice because they're a little bit different we've got circles we've got some little diamondy sort of shapes and we've also got some little teardrops so they're quite sort of quite nice they're a little bit different to to what we've had before I'm going to actually use the teardrops as if it's sort of rain coming down and of course it's on my pokey tool in, at the wrong angle There we go, so it looks like a little, little raindrops falling down. So if I just clear the decks here, cleared my hand a little bit. So there you can see there's two very different cards um, using exactly the same technique. So they're quite, you know, there's different ways you can make things look um, just by using different colours and Obviously, I've added some dark spots here where I didn't on this one. So you can make them look very different, but using exactly the same technique. So I hope you like that today. Um, the last thing I did actually do on here, and I think and I need to do on here, is I did add a little bit of Winker Stella to my flowers. Now, you do need to be a little bit careful when you do this because... Um, it can move the colour around as well if you're not too careful. So you want to you want to do it quite quickly and sort of not do too many strokes. But it just adds that little sparkle. And don't worry if it doesn't go all over, it doesn't matter. You just get that lovely sparkle, which you probably can't see anyway, but it does look pretty, trust me. Okay, so um, I hope you like that today. As I say, it was a, a really cute, it's one of my favourite techniques. I absolutely love doing it. So um, I hope you'll give it a go. Um, and if you haven't got the Whisper White ink, I recommend that you do purchase it because it is just brilliant for so many different things, um, not least speckles in the background and things like that. So um, yeah, highly recommend that. So I uh, will look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, have a good week, and I'll see you then. Bye.